So let's do a simulation of the reader write a problem and then try to um, find out. So what we're going to do here is have three reads and they appear in the following order. We have a read one, a read two, a write one, and a read three. Okay, so we have three different operations. The first thing is on each entry, uh, the readers check the, the writers in the system active or waiting. And if not, then you know you increment the waiting readers variable um, and you sleep. So the first reader comes along, there's no one in the system. It's completely clean. Assume that we're starting off with the, the system. There are no active readers, no active writers, uh, no waiting. It's all clean. So the first reader comes along, gets through the condition, um, there are obviously no writers in the system, so it increments the active readers and starts accessing the database. Note that the other variables are all zero. Next one comes along, similar. Um, he also gets to the system, clean, increments the active readers, and moves along to access the database. The third writer does, it does get interesting with the third writer, so when the writer comes along, he checks if there are any active readers or writers. Clearly there are active readers in the system because it's equal to two. And once he sees that, um, the writer starts to wait. So he gets himself in the queue and starts to wait, uh, waiting for someone to signal a wake up. Okay. And the writer can't start because of the reader, so it just goes to sleep. Finally, reader three comes along, but reader three notices that there's a waiting writer. So once it notices that instead of becoming an active reader, it actually queues itself up. Now let's say that reader 2 finishes before reader 1. Um, reader 2 is obviously not the last uh, reader in the system, not, last, not the last active reader in the system. So it does not wake up the waiting reader. It just simply decrements the waiting reader count, uh, sorry, the active reader count and moves on. Finally, the last of the two readers finishes and wakes up the writer. And so the condition, if active readers is greater than 0 and waiting writer is greater than 0, and then signals the writer. Okay. Finally, when the writer wakes up, it gets to activate the readers and the writers, but there are no writers in the system, so the waiting reader gets activated and then wakes up from the signal, becomes an active reader, and then finishes up. And when the writer finally completes, we are finished. So just to quickly summarize the overall synchronization co constructs. So we looked at semaphores, which have integers, which are essentially integers with restricted interfaces. There are two operations on them. The semaphores are primarily used for vending out a finite amount of resources in the system. You've got P's, which wait if it's a zero, that is there are no resources left in the system, and decrement the integer when, this, when there are resources left in the system, that is non-zero and V, which releases resources back into the system and wake up any sleeping tasks if they're waiting because um, the number of resources when they came along was zero. And you can initialize the value to any non-negative, um, so you can initialize the, integer, the semaphore to any non-negative values. Okay. Monitors are similar to conditional synchronization. They are a lock plus one or more conditional variables. Always acquire the lock before accessing the shared data use the condition vari conditional variables to indicate scheduling constraints and to wait inside a critical section. Um, so they support three operations, wait, signal, and broadcast. And finally, we looked at reader write-up uh, problem where you have readers and writers accessing the database, and we made an effort to increase the parallelism knowing the fact that a given task can either be only a reader or a writer. So readers can have multiple readers can access the database at the same time when there are no writers. Only one writer can access the database when there are no readers and there are no writers. I mean when there are no other writers. And that concludes uh, synchronization. Uh, if you wish to go back to languages and take a look at language support for synchronization, um, and then I will encourage you to go back to Java or C++. Java includes the synchronized keyword, which makes methods on a given object mutually exclusive and you also have conditional variables per object um, with the keyword wait and notify. In the next segment we'll be looking at deadlocks.